This next patient is a patient who's had previous surgery related to glaucoma resulting in permanent dilation of the pupil. This is actually an undilated pupil uh, showing significant medriasis or permanent uh, di dilation. Uh, I'm removing the capsule here in preparation for cataract surgery. You can see the glaucoma uh, filtering tube already in place. That's hydrodissection right there. Removing the cataract with phacal emulsification. This is an ultrasonic technique to uh, remove the cataract. It uh, doesn't take very long because it's a relatively soft cataract. And so I'm protecting the capsule and the cornea and just dissolving and removing the uh, lens nucleus and cortex. Very good. You'll see the residual cortex removal here. Very good. Shortly, I'll be inserting an intraocular lens into the capsular bag. Again, the, you know, the, the perfect cataract operation removes 99% of the cataract and then puts in an intraocular lens. Here I'm doing a little bit of syneculysis in preparation, putting in the um, um, a loop-designed acrylic lens into the capsular bag. And here I'm using the STC6. Uh, this is a straight needle. Uh, attached to a 10 polypropylene suture. Very careful here to create this cerclage or purse string effect without putting too much stress on the iris. I don't want to create a bleed, a hemorrhage that could very easily occur here. You know, this patient has quite a bit of permanent medriasis and some atrophy from long-standing medriasis. So I want to be extremely careful here just getting the edge of the edge of the um, the iris, and uh, we're going to go ahead and try to perform this purse string effect all the way around. I'll create an opening here so I can retrieve the the needle and just continue in this purse string effect here. So far, so good. Just getting the edge of the edge of the iris here. This is simply building on the techniques created by Dr. Malcolm McCannell and others that have uh, created this uh, technique of. Um, of a mechanical suture and a purse string technique. Just going all the way around 360 degrees. It's good to just take your time, not try to put too much strain on the iris that could cause a could cause a hemorrhage. Pass this in a transcorneal fashion, but not all the way through. Then you want to back it out. Back it out after you've gone through the iris here. And then before, don't pull it all the way out. This back it back in through another opening that you create. And you do this for 360 degrees. That way you're able to create this full purse string effect. And this is the last bit. You've got to assess these patients prior to surgery. Make sure they don't have too much atrophy. If this has been a long-standing process, then it's easy to pass this uh, tissue, the uh, the needle through tissue that's almost like uh, wet tissue paper, and long term, even if it works initially, can tear long term. So you can see this this iris, despite being um, pale. Uh, uh, bluish greenish color uh, still has adequate integrity to allow this 360 degree purse string suture which I'm going to tie here in a slip knot fashion you'll see this kind of gently brings down the pupil 
you don't want to be overly aggressive here. And again, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to functionally and cosmetically match the other eye under lighting conditions that are fairly uh, routine, fairly, you know, lighted conditions. So you want to try to match this other eye. Um, initially, it'll look a little bit geometric, sort of non-circular. This will tend to round up a little bit over time unless you have an unusually atrophic, atrophic uh, uh, iris. So this looks pretty good right now. patient did remarkably well postoperatively and even the little bit of geometric irregularity becomes a lot less noticeable over time as things kind of round up and uh, certainly very uh, greatly improved over the the preoperative condition thank you